very good afternoon to you all i am ankur chaudhary and these are a series of lectures on general knowledge for the purpose of preparation for various boy exams bp entrance exams hotel management exams so on and so forth so uh, the topic that uh, i'll be covering today is uh, economy as well as current affairs for the months of june and july of 2016 uh, you can very well understand that uh, this is a huge task uh, again i'll require all your cooperation so be very very focused make sure you do not have any distractions especially your smartphones and uh, you have a pen and paper ready at hand so uh, as far as this presentation is concerned i'll be first giving you a brief overview of how to prepare for economy the kind of questions that you will be expecting in your various exams and then later Uh, we'll see some important questions from the section that is economy i'll be explaining these questions to you next i'll be taking up some important questions from the months of june and july 2016 as well so we have lots of questions to do keep your uh, chatter to absolutely zero no talking with each other no chatting with each other uh, during the lecture if you have questions that you want to ask me i'll we'll have a question answer round as far as um, this lecture is concerned three times in this lecture so we starting at 12:10 first question and answer round will be at 12:30 for 5 minutes then again at 1 o'clock for another 5 minutes and then the res uh, residual queries that you have any remaining queries that you have you can ask me at the end of the lecture at 1:30 i will answer all of your queries i will try and answer all of your queries and uh, there is no absolutely no time limit as such by the end of the lecture but keep your questions limited to the material which is being shown to you in this presentation i don't want any questions from history polity economy it's a uh, economy of course you'll be asking history polity geography etc because you'll be having separate lectures on these topics so first let let me start off with explaining to you what to expect as far as economy is concerned so as far as economy is concerned it is cons it is consisting of two broad areas economy and business or more popularly known as corporate gk right so let's talk about first economy so the first type of questions that you can expect is from theoretical economic concept so what is gdp what is gnp what is inflation what how what are the types of inflations that we have so on and so forth broadly these questions can be expected mostly from macro economics only a few questions very rare questions occur from the subject that is micro economics so i would suggest since the time left for your exams is very less some of you who are starting the preparation right now or not very confident so you can avoid studying micro economics as such next we have some practical concepts related to economics economy again this is subdivided into two parts first is indian so over here with respect to inflation you can have questions from the indices which are used to measure inflation in india right and of course international or global business environment under this you can have questions from international organizations and their functioning like imf wto world bank etc as far as business gk is concerned the main it can be divided into two parts current affairs and static now current affairs as the name suggests if there is any recent acquisition for example flipkart acquired mintra in june 2016 that becomes important as far as your paper is concerned as far as static gk is concerned you can expect questions like where are the headquarters of say apple in corp inc uh, located in usa right so these are the broad types of questions that you can expect from economy and business as far as this section is concerned this is a re relatively important section for your papers you can expect about 4 to 5 questions coming in from this particular section again 4 to 5 is just an estimate where uh, there has not been any uh, any questions from this section or hardly one or two questions from this section asked in the papers and conversely there have been about 
10 to 12 questions asked from this particular section and some other papers. So it goes without saying that you cannot afford to leave this section as far as your preparation is concerned. Now talking about your preparation, how to prepare for this particular subject. Now you have, you have a large number of books available in the market for covering GK related to CLAT and other exams. Of course, Bullseye is also providing you notes on its website called gk.hitbullseye.com. So you can log on here. Dot com, right? So you can log on to this website. You can have access to a large number of free, free resources from this particular website. Of course, we have a paid module as well. So if you find you need to prepare in a more detailed manner, you can subscribe to that also. However, one suggestion uh, that I can give you is because the time that you have on your hand is very, very less right now. So just go through the source, whatever, whatever you pick up, be it from Hit Bullseye or be it from Bullseye or anyone else. Just stick to that one and try to revise it as many times as possible. And also this is the time if you if you've covered with the syllabus or even if you've covered 50% of the syllabus, just keep doing more and more mock tests, sectional tests, area wise tests, etc. This is an advice not just limited to general knowledge, but for your other sections as well. This is the time to do as many questions as possible. So let's first take up some important questions from the section of economy. Try to be very quick, right? I don't want you to type out the answers on the chat. I'll give you five to 10 seconds to think about the answer. And then eventually I'll give you the answer plus some explanations if there are any. So let's start with the question number one. What is the full form of the abbreviation IPO? The answer is initial public offer. Now this is an instrument through which a corporates or businesses raise money from the primary market or the stock market in India. This is the first time when a company raises money from the primary market for the first time it is called IPO. Right? After an IPO is issued, if another uh, round of funding is raised from the market, that is called FPO, further on public offer. Next question, inflation implies, the answer is a rise in general price index. Now, some of you might confuse the answer with rise in prices of consumer goods. However, if the first option was not given, then this answer would have been most suitable for this particular question. However, since inflation is measuring the general rise in a particular index, for example, consumer, consumer price index and wholesale price index, that is what the answer is. And also, if you read the option number four carefully, rise in per prices of consumer goods. So inflation is not just measuring the increase in price of only consumer goods, but services and other non-consumer goods as well. Next. Which one of the following statements does not relate to the concept of carbon credits? Now, some of you who are aware of the concept of carbon credits would get the answer correctly as question, option number four. It is very important that you read the question carefully. So this is asking does not relate to the concept of carbon credits. Now the answer is developing economies are allowed to offset some of their emissions from cars, factories and homes cars, factories and home by funding clean energy projects in developed ones. Whereas it is absolutely the reverse. Over here, developed economies, the actual answer should be, in reality what it is is, developing, developed economies are allowed to offset and to fund clean energy projects in, over here, should be developing ones. Next. The world economic crisis of which period is termed as the Great Depression? The answer of course is 1. The period uh, after World War II, World War One. I'm sorry, the World War One ended in 1919. Uh, this particular period, 1929 to 1933, saw, it saw a huge stock market crash in the USA first. And this particular event again spread to the various economies of Europe as well. So this particular period is known as the Great Depression. 
नेक्स्ट ऑपरेशन फ्लड इन्वॉल्व मिल्क सिमिलरली ऑपरेशन गोल्डन फ्लो वॉट इज दिट्स दिस इन्वॉल्व द आंसर ऑफकोर्स इज एडिबल ऑयल सो ऑपरेशन फ्लड इज रिलेटेड टू मिल्क ह्यूज इंक्रीज इन मिल्क प्रोडक्शन एज फार एज इंडिया इज कंसर्न इट वॉज ऑल्सो नोन एज वाइट रेवल्यूशन इन इंडिया ऑपरेशन गोल्डन फ्लो इंक्लूड्स एडिबल ऑयल फ्रॉम वेरियस सोर्सेज लाइक सनफ्लावर पीनट सोरन सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ नेक्स्ट द प्राइस ऑफ एनी करेंसी इन द इंटरनेशनल मार्केट इज determined by the answer of course is the demand for goods and services provided by that country now some of you also might think that economic stability of that country of course that is also a factor determining the price of a currency but however when a country is stable economically only then can it produce goods which can be exported so but the real cause here is the demand for goods and services provided by that country so as far as this particular option is concerned let me just explain it to you a little further now when the demand for goods and services let us say produced by india it increases right india would take payments from let us say usa which is the importing partner right which is importing goods from india india would take payments from usa in terms of us dollars because that is the currency in which international trade is done however when this particular money is has to be converted into indian rupees for it to be used in india basically when this dollar amount that has come from the usa when it has to be used in india it has to be cover, uh, converted into indian rupees what this does is it increases the demand for indian rupees in the market so in this scenario when the demand is increasing right the demand for indian rupee also increases and subsequently indian rupee appreciates against the us dollar conversely when the demand decreases demand for indian goods and services decreases then we will get less amount of dollars and less and less amount of dollars will be converted into indian rupees lowering the demand for indian rupees in the market consequently resulting in reduction or depreciation of value of indian rupees against other currencies next question very important black money is so the answer is income on which payment of tax is evaded so uh, again one of you has answered this and it is a very tricky question as such now black money is not illegally earned money that is from activities which are illegal so i can very well earn from legal activities but not show it as my income to the income tax authority so for example a professional like a lawyer or a doctor who accepts payments in cash does not reflect that in his account books and shows his income as lower a uh, lower as compared to what he or she is actually earning so that is he is earning he or she is earning from legal activity that is practicing law or practicing uh, medicine however while the activity is legal but if that income is not reflected in the income tax returns then of course that will amount to generation of black money so black money can be generated from legal as well as illegal sources you know all the questions i'll be taking at around 12:30 please please be patient please keep noting down uh, your queries next question is the term bull and bear are used in the is a very easy question as such these terms are related to stock exchange now when it is said that the stock exchange is bullish or like a bull then it is uh, it is reflecting the fact that people are very optimistic that the stock market would rise right so bull is related to a very optimistic uh, uh, feeling throughout the market conversely bear the term is used when the people investors are expecting the markets to go down in the near future next fiscal policy is concerned with the answer of course is debt and public finance another suggestion that i can give you is uh, if you have some doubts of, on any questions of you or if you think that you were not aware of a particular question earlier just take a snapshot on your mobile or computer device that you are using 
However, we will also be putting up these videos on our YouTube channel so you can watch them later. So whichever suits you. Fiscal policy is concerned with debt and public finance. So if the government a fiscal policy basically includes uh, measures like increasing of tax rates, decreasing of tax rates. Next, increasing expenditure in infrastructure like uh, in building roads, bridges, etc. So on and so forth. So as far as fiscal policy is concerned, debt and public finance is the answer. Another policy is monetary policy. It is concerned with policies which increase or decrease money that is circulating in the economy. Fiscal policy is made by the government of India through Ministry of Finance. Monetary policy is announced by the Reserve Bank of India in India. Next, in India the Finance Commission is constituted after every, the answer of course is 5 years, absolutely right. So the President of India appoints the Finance Commission every 5 years under the provisions of Article 280 of the Constitution of India. The basic purpose of Finance Commission is to ensure effective distribution of tax revenues between the center and the states. So next question is which one of the which of the following constitutes the World Bank? I think uh, there is something wrong with this particular question. The another option which is missing is only A. Only A. So the answer is fifth only A that is IBRD is only a, a part of World Bank amongst all these organizations. Now World Bank as such includes IBRD as well as IDA International Development Agency. International Development Agency right World Bank constitutes of IBRD plus International Development Agency. Next question is from banking. The rates charged by banks on loans given to customers are the answer of course is they are set by the banks themselves. Much much earlier RBI would be deciding the rates at which the banks would give out their loans. However now banks are absolutely free to uh, decide these interest rates. RBI only changes the policy rates that is repo rate, reverse repo rate etc. And on the basis of those rates banks are then free to decide what interest they would charge to their customers. Next. Which of the following is not a credit rating agency? The answer of course is Lintas India Private Limited. All the three other options are credit rating agencies. What these agencies do? They provide a rating to corporates as well as countries in terms of their financial stabi stability. So higher the rating, more stable the country is and higher the rating, the less uh, interest would be charged from that country or corporate if it goes in the market to take a loan. Next, which of the following is one of the indicators of human development index that is HDI. So the answer is life expectancy at birth. Human development index is, uh, is an index which ranks various countries in terms of the relative levels of development in each country. It is published every year by this organization called UNDP that is United Nations Development Program in its report which is called Human Development Report right it has HDI measures three basic uh, indicators first one of course is life expectancy at birth next is education third one is related to per capita income of uh, people of a country next which one of the following is not a mode of foreign capital flow in India? So the answer of course is no frills accounts. These are accounts which do not have any benefits like debit card, credit card, net banking facilities associated with them. Of course they do not bring in foreign capital as uh, against all the other options FDI, FII, NRI deposits. They get in foreign capital into India. Next. Which five year plan, again an easy question, has started from the year 2012-2013? The answer of course is 12th five year plan, the period for which is 2012 to 2017, that is the current year. Next, the primary purpose of WTO is to promote, so WTO of course is World Trade Organization. So you can easily 
shortlist these two uh, options of course wto is not just concerned with unilateral trade that is between two countries a and b let us say it is concerned with multilateral trade that is uh, trade between various different countries across the world so the answer is option number 4 next who among the following is often referred to as the father of india's green revolution again an easy question dr m s swaminathan he was a pioneer who brought high yielding variety of seeds and various techniques related to green revolution green revolution was of course a huge increase in production of wheat and rice especially in the north india right dr varghese kurian is related to white revolution that is operation flood related to increase in milk production in india next question is which of the following does not fall under service sector answer of course is mining right there are three th three broad sectors in an economy primary secondary and tertiary primary is related to the production of natural resources that includes mining quarrying uh, agriculture horticulture etc secondary sector includes industries that are involved in processing of the production uh, of the products of from the primary sector Th third is tertiary sector it involves services like banking insurance public transport and electric supply of course the answer is mining next headquarters of securities and exchange board of india that is sebi is located in which city again this is a fact based question so some of you must be knowing bombay is or mumbai now is known as the financial capital of the country so naturally an important financial organization like sebi would have its headquarters in mumbai so that brings me to the end of questions from economy i'll take your questions now so guys if you have any questions please uh, feel free to ask them right now before we move forward question number 7 shraddha asks question number 7 what is the difference between two and fourth option okay option number 2 is related to money which is earned from illegal activities from for example drug smuggling weapons uh, smuggling it's uh, terrorism etc so that is illegally earned money and you are asking option difference between option number 4 underhand deals is related to for example a bureaucrat or an ias or ips officer or a minister taking bribes from uh, someone to for any purpose whatsoever so i hope this is clear how do people convert black money through illegal means still without paying tax uh hina there is there are lot large number of uh, ways in which black money is converted into white money without even paying taxes right uh, for for example one example that i can think of is uh, people would give uh, their illegally earned money that would be in cash to a uh, let us say a, a a a farmer friend who is not under the scrutiny of income tax departments and the farmer friends then gives a loan to them in terms of writes a check to them in form of a loan right so that is one of the way large number of other ways also uh, hawara transactions is one example so question number 2 what's the difference between budget deficit and deficit budget rise in budget deficit so budget deficit very broadly refers to the difference between the expenses right so budget deficit expenses minus revenue expenses minus revenue yani that means you are spending more as compared to your uh, your earning so that is the budget deficit uh shada i am not sure what deficit budget is this is the term that i am hearing for the very first time zenith asks what it what is credit rating zenith as i explained earlier now there are different companies who would give who would rate corporates like reliance or even a company like bullseye they would give them rating on the basis of their financial performance or stability so for example the highest rating is a then lower one b c and d is the lower most rating so naturally reliance is more financially stable as compared to a company like bullseye so of course reliance if it gets a the naturally bullseye would be lower let us say we get c right so these are ratings given to these companies now if let us say reliance goes to state bank of india to for asking uh, for for taking a loan right 
RBI, uh, sorry, SBI would give a lower rate of interest, for example, 10% to Reliance because it is more, it is more financially stable, and uh, SBI sure that uh, Reliance would return that money. However, since Bullseye has a C rating, then it would, uh, it is a riskier customer as compared to Reliance, right? So it would uh, get a higher rate of interest. It, uh, the bank would be charging a higher rate of interest from Bullseye as compared to uh, Reliance, let us say 16%. So this is the banks use the ratings of various credit given by various credit rating agencies to decide the rate of interest that they will be charging in case these companies ask them for a loan. Shraddha asks uh, question number 15. Okay, Explain the other options which is not a mode of foreign capital inflow the, basically the question is asking uh, what are the various sources from which india gets foreign capital that is in terms of dollars pounds etc so on and so forth fdi stands for foreign direct investment so for example if an international company like pepsi opens a factory here in india for of course if it is opening a factory it is investing a lot of money and thinking of long term that is termed as FDI. FII stands for foreign institutional investment, foreign institutional investment and not foreign indirect investment, right? So this is when a foreign uh, investor invests in our stock markets only for short term gains, right? So FDI is long term, FII is short term. NRI deposits, as the name suggests, a uh, large number of NRIs living uh, naturally outside of India, if they put their dollar money or money in some other currency in money accounts as uh, in bank accounts in India, those are known as NRI deposits. So of course, these are sources of capital, foreign capital inflow in India. So the option is no frills account. So I guess the questions have managed to answer most of your questions. Let's now go forward to general awareness from the months of June and July. Now I'm starting from June and July. Of course, this is from 2016 because you can expect questions from the past one year as far as your papers are concerned. So most of your papers are from June, uh, from are in the months of May as well as June. So that is why I'm starting from June 2016. So uh, let's take up the first question. In June 2016, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi was conferred with Amir Amanullah Khan Award, the highest civilian award of the answer, of course, is Afghanistan. So India's, for example, India's highest civilian award is Bharat Ratna. Similarly, Afghanistan's highest civilian award is Amir Amanullah Khan Award. Next, in June 2016, Google and Tata Trust's joint initiative was launched in Kolkata, West Bengal. The initiative aims at reducing the gen digital gender gap in rural areas of India. What is the name of this particular initiative? The answer some of you are knowing correctly as Internet Sathi. Now as far as preparation of current affairs is concerned, I realize that this is a topic, this is an area that uh, most of you are very, very scared of. Of course, if you have been reading the newspaper, you will be finding it very, these questions very, very easy. But I do realize most of you will not, would not have been reading the newspaper regularly. So for that purpose, uh, again, you can log on to gk.hitbullseye.com. Over there, we are providing monthly current affairs absolutely free of cost uh, to all of our students and beyond. Next, which of the following in June 2016 announced to acquire professional networking platform LinkedIn in an all-cash transaction valued at $26.2 billion? So Microsoft is the right answer. Microsoft acquired uh, LinkedIn in June 2016. Next, in June 2016, the railways launched a facility to provide baby food at stations and to ensure availability of essential items like hot milk and water at stations under the scheme. What is this facility called? Most of you know the answer to this particular one. Good that you've been reading up on your current affairs. The answer is Janani Seva. Janani, of course, uh, is a Hindi word for mother, right? The union cabinet gave its approval for the civil aviation policy. Which of the following is an aim of this policy, right? So uh, both Shraddha and Keshav are right. Option is, the correct option is all of these. So again, 
this is only a sample a type of questions that you might get you might get questions which are related to these options so you need to remember all these four options to face any questions on the new civil aviation policy next which one of the following raised 500 million dollars at the london stock exchange after it launched india's first internationally listed certified green bonds to finance climate change solutions around the world the correct answer is uh, one that is axis bank so the concept that that we are talking about is green bond a green bond is nothing but a way of raising money or taking money from international markets but the important difference here is this particular money which is raised through green bonds would be used only to finance climate change solutions around the world and this money will not be used for any other purpose next we have the new development bank of the BRICS countries announced to issue its first yuan denominated bonds also known as dash bonds with plans to release more bonds in local currencies including the Indian rupee so you have to fill in this particular blank the answer is again green bonds so yuan based yuan is of course the currency of china again brics is a group of countries group of develop large developing economies across the world it's an acronym for brazil russia india china and south africa next in june 2016 india surpassed japan to become the world's dash largest oil consumer with its oil demand galloping 8.1% in 2015 according to BP statistical review of world energy. So the answer of course is third right. So as far as Indian economy is concerned India is also now the sixth largest economy in the world. It recently overtook Britain who was at the sixth position very recently. Next, who among the following was in June 2016 named the ambassador for Swachh Bharat Missions youth based Swachh Sathi which is a student internship program right. The answer is correct uh, as pointed by Kesha, Vaditya, Jaban Preet and Saima that is Dia Mirza right. So you have to understand this, this question I have deliberately made these questions uh, having long statements because it is giving you information which is more uh, which is beyond that the question that is being asked right so you might get a question what is swach sathi so the answer would be a student internship program related to swach bharat abhiyan right so in june 2016 boxing legend muhammad ali one of the world's greatest sporting figures died at the age of 74 what was his real or birth name okay again okay. another easy question cassius Marcellus Clay. He was of course born a Christian. He later converted to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Next, who among the following was in June 2016 nominated as an independent candidate to be a member of the International Olympic Committee IOC based out of Lausanne in Switzerland. Again, this was a very important news and I, I expect most of you know the answer to this question. Answer is Neeta Ambani. Another question that you might get related to this particular statement is where are the headquarters of IOC International Olympic Committee based out of? So the answer would be Lausanne in Switzerland. Next South Asian Games gold medalist Avtar Singh qualified for the 2016 Rio Olympics Games scheduled to be held in August 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Which sport is being talked about? This is another favorite type of question as far as uh, various competitive exam is concerned they will give you the name of a sports person and which sport is he or she associated with the answer over here of course is judo next which state in june 2016 became the first indian state to give transgender people a social welfare benefits such as pension housing and food grains is generally given to those living below the poverty line again some of you have answered this correct question correctly the state is odisha we recently have had a new act that is Transgender Benefits Act which was passed in the parliament. Now under this transgenders they are in, recognized as the third gender. They are giving they are being given various social welfare benefits including reservations etc. Right so Odisha becomes the first state in India to provide them such benefits. Next the 25th GD Birla award for Dash for 2015 
was awarded to Professor Sanjay Mittal in June 16. So you have to identify the area in which GD Birla award is given out. The answer is scientific research. Right? So as far as the name of winners are concerned of such awards, they are not very important, but you must know in what field are these awards uh, given out. Next, uh, Sujoy Bos, Director and Global Co-Head Infrastructure and Natural Resources International Finance Corporation, Washington DC was appointed as the Chief Executive Officer, CEO of NIIF. Right? So the question is, what does NIIF stand for? So the answer here is National Inf Investment and Infrastructure Fund. So this fund has been created by the new government. The idea is this fund, the money in this particular fund would be used in case of infrastructure development across the country. Next, in June 2016, the Union Cabinet approved implementation of the recommendations of the Dash Central Pay Commission, CPC, on pay and pensionary benefits, which will come into effect from 1st January 2016. Correct answer is, of course, uh, option number two, that is 7th Pay Commission. So after every 10 years, a pay commission is constituted by the government of India. What it does, it revises the salaries and pension benefits given to the employees of only the central government. State governments have separate or different uh, pay commissions in their states. So as far as central pay commission is concerned, the current one is the 7th pay commission. Next, the union cabinet in June 2016 approved the establishment of fund of funds for startups, that is FFS, at blank for contribution to various alternative investment funds registered with SEBI, which would extend funding support to startups. So, which is the organization in which this fund has been set up? You have to fill in this blank. The answer, of course, is, as correctly pointed out by Keshav, Small Industries Development Bank of India, that is SIDB. Next, in June 2016, Rodrigo Duterte was sworn in as the president of blank that is you have to identify the country with some hoping his maverick style will energize the country but others fearing he will undercut one of asia's liveliest democracies democracies amid threats to kill criminals and mass again this is a very controversial character most of you must be knowing him uh, especially for his abuses to uh, the previous president of usa barack obama the answer of course is the philippines next in June 2016, Manoj Kumar and Vikas Krishna Krishan qualified for the Rio 2016 Olympics scheduled to be held in August 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Which sport is being talked about? Absolutely correct. Answer is boxing. Next, in June 2016, the Rio 2016 organizing committee revealed the official slogan for the first Olympic and Paralympic Games in South America. Identify the slogan. Again, this is a very important question, something which was in news for a very long time because the first Olympic Games were held in, in a country in uh, South America, that is Brazil. The slogan, of course, that is being talked about is a new world, that is option number one. It was announced in July 2016 that Dash will become the first woman in the world to receive the award for exceptional bravery at sea for 2016 from International Maritime Organization for saving the lives of seven fishermen. Of course, there's a very important question, highly expected in various competitive exams. The name is Radhika Menon, right? Again, another question which can be framed from this particular statement is, which organization gives the Exceptional Bravery at Sea Award annually? The answer would be International Maritime Organization, that is IMO. So, uh, which fashion brand in July 2016 announced to acquire global clothing brand Forever 21 in the Indian market for $26 million? Correct. The answer, of course, is Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail. Aditya Birla has also launched this e-commerce uh, startup. Can anyone name that uh, organization, name that company or the website? It is known as ABOF, right? Aditya Birla uh, Fashion, right? abof.com or .in. 
right so what is the name of the social media banking platform for facebook and twitter users launched by sbi in july 2016 so you can expect a lot of questions from uh, digital india or related to digital payments in india something like this the answer of course is uh, sbi or state bank of india mingle next in july 2016 the telecom telecom regulatory authority of india launched dash mobile application right so lots of mobile applications being launched by government and government organizations like trai so mobile internet application for measuring real time mobile internet speed of consumers so the answer of course is as correctly pointed out by keshav and sumiran right that is my speed next in july 2016 the union cabinet approved the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana right pmkvy this is very very important uh, scheme launched by a government by the government with an outlay of dash that is amount of money to impart skilling to 1 crore people over the next 4 years that is 2016 to 2020 the answer of course is rupees 12000 crores so it is very unlikely you'll get a question like this how much money has been allotted to it but of course two questions can come out from this particular statement what is the aim or objective of pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana that is imparting skill to 1 crore people that is the objective now another question which can be here what is the time period decided for pm k v y of course that is the next uh, next four years from 2016 to 2020 next in july 2016 the union cabinet approved a national apprenticeship promotion scheme with an outlay of rupees 10000 crores and a target of dash apprentices to be trained by 2019 20 so answer over here is 50 lakh next so uh, you've seen government being very proactive in terms of launching digital payment methods various applications various government schemes in skill development digital india make in india etc also the government is expanding its foreign relations or making them more cordial and in investing in neighborhood countries so next question is from international relations in july 2016 the union cabinet gave its approval for the revised cost estimate rce of rupees 7290 crores for the ongoing 1020 megawatt hydroelectric project in which country the correct answer is of course the country a neighboring country that is bhutan okay so i i see that some of you are getting your answers uh, wrong it's absolutely fine you know i'm not expecting you to know all the answers correctly but however try in your question paper when you're writing the paper try and avoid guesswork right because that will entail a lot of negative marking and take away marks which you've earned from knowing the answers as well right so learn the art of leaving the question that you're not sure of the answer next in july 2016 the union cabinet gave its approval for setting up a major port at inayam which will not only act as a major gateway container port for indian cargo that is presently transshipped outside the country but also become a transshipment hub for the global east west trade route so which is the state in which the port in iam is located in okay uh, one piece of advice uh, we getting to the correct answer is option elimination method right so the term is called in iam right so maybe using our common sense we can imagine it is a term from one of the south indian languages right so naturally your options that is option number 2 gujarat as well as odisha they are ruled out right so you have only three options to choose from again so you can this is a method that you can use to eliminate options the answer over here would be tamil nadu uh, it's 1 o'clock uh, so i'll take your questions for another 5 7 minutes so if you have any queries as far as um, indian economy is concerned uh, feel free to ask them as well because current affairs questions are mostly fact based questions right okay okay so shraddha asks what are green bonds so broadly speaking i'll explain bonds first the bonds are a financial instrument used by companies like for example again reliance a large companies rather not companies like bullseye 
they are used by large companies to take money from people still located in india or across the world so what the company does is it issues a bond to let us say person a bond is nothing but a document in which it is written that you give me 100 rupees today i'll give you 110 rupees after one year so that is how a loan is uh, taken by the company right so a document is given to person a and person a deposits his money or dollars uh, with the uh, company issuing the bonds right so it is an instrument using which companies take money from people right now this money can be used by companies for various different purposes right however when you talk about green bonds the money raised by companies through green bonds can only be used for projects which are climate uh, which are providing climate change solutions for uh, the problem of climate change is related to production of uh, more and more greenhouse gases right so if we have projects like solar energy power plant then that will provide a solution to climate change problem so the money raised by company through a green bond can be used to finance a solar power project and so on and so forth so shada i hope this is clear now okay any more questions before we move forward so uh, let me just move forward with the questions uh, the question is uh, from the banking uh, from the banking sector in july 2016 reliance industries and india's largest lender sbi signed shareholders agreement to set up small deposit taking institutions called yes fill in the blanks payment banks absolutely correct kesha the answer is payment banks so another question that you might be asked is reliance has partnered with which bank to set up a payment bank the answer of course would be sbi conversely you might ask you might be asked sbi has collaborated with which uh, of the following companies to form a payment bank in that case the answer would be reliance industries uh surbhi uh, your question i am afraid is uh, not related to as such the content of this particular lecture but at the end of the lecture if we have time i'll address your query then so you may uh, you may ask your question at that time right so payment bank right so uh, so there are, uh, as far as banks are concerned there is one type of bank called universal bank this is uh, this is your conventional banks like hdfc access bank icici sbi sbp so on and so forth universal banks provide all kinds of services related to lending financing deposit taking uh, fixed deposit so on and so forth right so universal banks provide all kinds of services there is a different type of bank banking license that have been launched in india these banks are called differential banks so two types of differential banks have been launched so for one is payments and another one is small finance banks or simply small banks now payment banks licenses were issued or called for uh, applications were called for by interested parties by rbi in 2013 now these banks what they have very limited uh, functions that they can provide so they cannot take deposits or give out, give out locker facilities or give out loans to its customers so what these payment banks are concerned with is only facilitating the transfer of money from a to b so payment banks license even company like paytm has also applied for such a license airtel vodafone and all various companies so it is only related to transfer of money from a to b right and not related to your giving out loans taking deposits uh, giving interest on saving interest uh, saving loans etc next we have small banks this is another type of uh, license which were for which applications were called by uh, the rbi again these banks have a limitations that they can operate in a limited area for example only three districts in a particular state otherwise they can they perform all the functions of universal bank the only limitation is the area of operation is limited to let us say three districts or two districts okay in july 2016 chief justice uh, sushila karki took oath of office and secrecy to become the first woman chief justice of again 
uh, a very uh, important question the country of nepal next in july 2016 a senior ips officer mr ashok patnaik was appointed as chief executive officer of natgrid question is what is natgrid uh, the answer here is national intelligence grid so this is a grid which is nothing but a database right an interconnected database or a centralized database in which the information related to illegal activities like terrorism etc would be stored in a central database and which can be accessed by all uh, the police forces of all the state governments in the country right answer is national intelligence grid next india celebrated national doctors day on which date to honor the contributions of dr bidhan chandra roy who was a former west bengal cm who was also a physician answer is july 1st 2016 now you have to understand this is national doctors day that has been spoken about international doctors day is celebrated on 30th of jan every year right so you might get questions related to various important dates in india and across the world as well next in july 2016 b sai pranith right b sai pranith won the 2016 canada open grand prix dash title in the men single category so the question that is being asked is with which sport is the canada open grand prix related the answer of course is badminton again two types of questions arise from this particular statement uh, with which sport is b sai pranit associated with and again with which uh, sport is canada open grand prix associated with who among the following in july 2016 became the first indian football player to play in the uefa europa league thus becoming the only indian to play for the first team in a top division league of europe so the answer here is option number 1 gurpreet singh sandhu next which country won the 2016 uefa european football championship that is euro cup 2016 which was held in july 2016 again a very easy question for those of you who are passionate about football and follow it the answer is right as pointed out by keshav and aditya right the answer is portugal next which country in july 60, 2016 declared a health emergency in 11 states due to an expanding outbreak of the zika virus this time we have seema and aditya with the right answer the correct answer is of course peru zika virus was mainly concentrated in the uh, south american con continent right uh, however ebola virus the outbreak was more uh, focused in the western african countries like sierra leone liberia etc next question which state tourism board struck gold at the pacific asia travel association awards in recognition of its trend setting marketing initiative which have boosted the state's profile as a must visit destination so this particular award pacific asia travel association award was won by the kerala tourism next which of the following in july 2016 announced the acquisition of online online retail portal jabong through its fashion subsidiary mintra again the answer i have already shared with you uh, previously in this particular uh, lecture the answer of course is flipkart flipkart acquired mintra first and then mintra acquired jabong right which of the following in july 2016 became the first indian company to issue rupee denominated bonds known as masala bonds on the london stock exchange in this case the answer is hdfc bank so let's just talk about masala bonds now we all understand what bonds are right so these banks or these companies are issuing bonds to people in in india as well as abroad to raise money for themselves to give out loans right so however the traditional practice is that if hdfc wants to raise money or issue bonds in usa it would have been done in us dollars if it wanted to issue in uk of course it would have been in uh, pounds right similarly in europe where europe that is broadly speaking in the local currency however this is a new type of bond which has been launched 
in which these uh, bonds will be issued by Indian companies in other countries in rupee denominated that is in rupees that is the major difference between traditional bonds and masala bonds right this was done by HDFC and it raised close to 300 million dollars in the London Stock Exchange which company topped the latest fortune 500 list of the world's biggest corporations in terms of revenue released in July 2016 so which is the world's largest company the question is that yes anyone else would like to answer yes absolutely correct the answer is option number one that is Walmart next question number 61 how many Indian companies made it to the latest fortune 500 list of the world's biggest corporation in terms of revenue so how many companies were there in the top 500 revenue earning companies across the world in this particular question the answer is option number four that is seven Indian companies so the highest number of companies were from USA in this particular list but only seven uh, uh, seven uh, companies from India were in this coveted list next is which state government in July 2016 launched the Pashudhan Bhima Yojana right aimed at providing insurance cover to cattle breeders in the state at different premium rates for different animals so answer of course is the state of Haryana uh, so Miran, I'm not sure I can name all the companies but various uh, huge companies like Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, Hindustan Petroleum, uh, ONGC, State Bank of India, right? These are five or six companies I can remember. Of course, uh, I, I encourage you to use uh, Google for such questions. Next, India was ranked at dash out of 149 nations with regard to achieving the sustainable development goals according to a new index released in July 2016 that shows all countries face major challenges in achieving this these ambitious goals so what was the rank of India answer of answer is 110 the sustain so sustainable development goals were a set of eight goals uh, set by the UN General Assembly right these were related to education health incomes poverty hunger etc right so for example they uh, these particular goals were adopted in the year 2000 and the targets were set for the year 2015 so for example one of the goals was related to global hunger that global hunger uh, would be uh, reduced by 50 percent as compared to 2000 in 2015 right so that this is how these goals were defined at the global level of course these goals were also defined at national level as well so for example in India the global hunger global hunger had to be reduced by 60 percent in these 15 years now since this time period was got over this particular report was released showing the performance of various countries and in that India scored a very poor rank of 110 now after the sustainable development goals they got over in 2015 new set of goals have been identified called millennium development goals the period for which is of course 2015 to 2030 next in july 2016 Pema Khandu of uh, congress party was sworn in as the 10th chief minister of which state fill in the blank thus becoming the youngest chief minister in the country yes the answer uh, correct Aditya uh, the state of Arunachal Pradesh so again another question that can come up from this particular statement is who has recently become the youngest chief minister in the country answer of course would be Pema Khandu of Arunachal Pradesh this eminent literature social activist and a Maksese awardee passed away in July 2016 influenced by the communist movement of 1940s she chose to work amongst the poorest of the poor in the tribal areas in southern West Bengal and other parts of the country identify the person Keshav, of course, uh, the new uh, there's a new uh, chief minister that we have now of Arunachal Pradesh. But remember, these questions are from July 2016. Answer to this question is, of course, Mashweta Devi. Next, India's Rio Olympics bound Indrajit Singh was tested positive for a banned substance in July 2016. He had won a bronze medal in 2014 Asian Games and had qualified for the 
2016 Olympics, which sport is being talked about? Absolutely right, Hina and uh, Sumiran. The answer is, of course, option number three. Next, Neera Chopra created history in July 2016 by becoming the first Indian athlete to become a world champion at any level when he won a gold gold medal at the under 20 world championship in Poland. Which sport is being talked about? Absolutely right. So, javelin throw. So, in fact, Neera Chopra set a new world record for javelin throw distance in the under 20 category. Right? Again, a very important question as far as your exams are concerned. So, the last question for this particular PPT. Which country declared a three-month state of emergency in July 2016 in response to the failed coup that happened in mid-July 2016? So, the question is from International Affairs. And the answer, of course, is very simple. That is the country that is Turkey. So, with that, uh, we come to the end of this particular video lecture. In this, we've covered, firstly, how you would, what kind of questions you can expect from the section, very important section for your exams, economy. Next, we also saw the various areas from economy in which you can expect questions from. Next, I told you about how to prepare for economy and I again repeat myself, this is a very, very critical time for you guys and very, very important that you focus more on solving questions even if you have not yet covered your syllabus, right? And next, I took up uh, 20 odd questions, important questions from economy. Also, uh, then we have done the general awareness uh, questions, important questions from the months of June and July 2016. So some of you, good good on your part, most of you, uh, some of you got uh, a lot of questions correct. But for others who could not manage to answer these questions, don't be disheartened. At least learn these questions by heart. You'll find a large number of online mock test series or you can purchase a, any book uh, from the market or in fact Bullseye Notes as well. So. Uh, you do those questions, memorize them. Very like it is very likely that you'll get questions from the questions that you've practiced. So practice more and more questions as as possible. We still have about five or six minutes left, uh, so I'll be glad to take your questions if any. Uh, Sumiran Manorma yearbook is a very very uh, heavy book. It is very not. It's got not quite possible for you to cover that. So I would suggest you take any CLAT specific books or bullseye notes. Those should be sufficient. But again, I repeat focus more on solving maximum number of possible of questions. So even if you are scoring poorly in mock, uh, mock tests, keep writing tests, analyze those tests, memorize those answers, very likely the same questions might appear in your actual tests. Again, Hina, uh, the same advice, uh, you can go on to uh, gk.hitbullseye.com also to see various free resources for uh, GK preparation. Again, we have a paid module as well. So, in case you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, the YouTube channel, uh, the name is Hit Bullseye. On this, you will find more than 60 videos focused on general knowledge. So, a, a team of our uh, faculty members, including myself, we have covered sections like history, geography, polity, economy and miscellaneous, art and culture, etc. And the entire syllabus has been covered in these set of videos. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, these are... Uh, Available to you guys absolutely free of cost. Aditya, start with the area wise tests now, but also get into the habit of writing full length tests because eventually you have the stamina to sit for two hours and answer so many questions in various examinations, right? So start with area wise tests as far as GK is concerned and then gradually move on to full length tests as well. Sumiran, so uh, I understand your pain. Uh, it's not just with economics, but there are large number of, uh, there's a, the syllabus is huge for all sections of general knowledge. Again, uh, limit your uh, study to just one particular source. So if you uh, purchase our uh, paid module, you get a set of highly uh, selected and very important questions, around 400 questions that we've selected in our economy and business booklet, right? So if you solve those questions, you'll be in a very comfortable position as far as economy is concerned. Right guys, any more questions before we end the session? Uh, Shraddha, uh, which old books are you talking about? Can you please uh, 
specify? Yes, definitely, Shraddha. If uh, uh, you have large number of publishers which are uh, publishing uh, books, again, you can refer to old books for static GK, right? Topics like history, geography, uh, polity, theory of economics, etc. But again, for current affairs, you'll have to uh, refer to newer sources, right? Okay, Keshav is asking open Grand Prix and award section which are important for CLAT. Which open I, 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 are you talking about uh, tennis, Keshav? Okay, so of course, uh, as far as uh, these opens are concerned, again, your men's single title, women's single title, these are very important. You should know the winner and the uh, runner, runners up name. So, in case any Indian uh, also wins or becomes a runner up, again, that becomes important. So, as far as Grand Prix are concerned, you have more than 15 or 16 Grand Prix uh, in racing. Again, no need to uh, memorize the names of all the winners, but only memorize the year end champion, right? And award section, again, this is a very tricky question. Uh, you have to know the various important awards, like national awards related to films, arts, literature, etc. Right? GD Birla Award, what what field are they given in Padam Shri Awards, right? What field are they given in? Who gives them? On what day are they given, right? Because Padam Shri winners, you cannot possibly memorize uh, so many names, right? So this is a very tricky question. You have to just uh, go through the current affairs that are given, that are being uploaded by Bullseye and its notes. We filter out the non-important ones and only give you the important ones. Keshav, it's not possible for you to remember uh, uh, your Padma Award winner, so there's no need to uh, you know take tension as far as those winners are concerned. Again, it's very unlikely that a question like that might be asked from you. Uh, well, even uh, if you're unfortunate and such a question is asked, then leave it. Right? Sema, again, a very good question. What about books and authors? This is very, very important. Right? Very important if a famous personality has written a book, right? For example, we have uh, uh, a book by the Dalai Lama, which is which was launched about a couple of days ago, right? Next, if a book, if an Indian author wins an international award, that is also very important. Zenith, I understand this is a uh, universal problem, so don't worry. Everyone is finding GK to be very vast, right? So all of you are sailing in the same boat, and you are competing against each other. So don't worry at all learn positively we stay positive if you put in the effort then definitely you'll be able to score well right i also know that the gk syllabus is very vast but also realize everyone is struggling so you're not uh, special in terms of you know you don't you're not the only one who's facing the problems okay any more question guys so i guess i've managed to uh, answer all your queries so thank you very much everyone for attending this session uh, I hope you found this presentation to be useful. Make sure you revise the concepts that I've shared with you today. Make sure uh, if you've taken snapshots, just go through these snapshots again or wait for a couple of days till we put this video on our YouTube channel to revise. Right? Okay. Thank you so much.